one is coercive, the other is not. So, uh, Lynn, welcome to Free Talk Live. It's great to finally have you on the air. I had the pleasure of meeting you briefly at the Austin Bitcoin Conference, and by the time we got to meet, we'd already booked up the show with guests, and I didn't feel right bumping somebody else to put you on the air. But now here you are at Porkfest, and it's great to have you. Welcome. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, um, I, I, you know, I wish we never had to, to meet, honestly, mm -hmm. because uh, the reason why we have met is because your son is in jail uh, or in prison, I guess. He's awaiting trial on various charges relating to, uh, let's see, there was uh, hacking, supposedly, money laundering, drug facilitating drug deals, mm -hmm. I think. And Don't forget the kingpin. The king, there's a kingpin there's charge? There's a kingpin charge. Oh, yeah. that's right. I remember reading that and thinking, what in the world is mm -hmm. a kingpin charge? Well, pretty serious. That's what it is. <sighs> Unbelievable. So they're accusing your son, Ross Ulbricht, of being the mastermind behind the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got a website, freeross.org. We've been promoting it on the air, encouraging oh, folks you. to come over and, and help out and pitch in uh, Bitcoin. You guys are taking PayPal. You'll take a check because mm -hmm. as you've said your family isn't uh really you know flush with cash so any little bit that people can send over is helpful absolutely yeah prior i mean contrary to what uh some people say on the internet we are not rich we have no hidden wallet mm -hmm. we have no bitcoin <laughs> ross is has nothing we have to um put money in his commissary for him to get enough to eat the uh, Silk Road was an underground uh, sort of drug market. It, oh, there was other things you could buy there, like fake IDs and, and even some legal products. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a new, a new iteration of it up there. So even though they took out the first Silk Road and they arrested Ross, it was a month later that Silk Road 2.0 sort of rose from the ashes and uh, just continued right along. So they haven't stopped the online drug no, trade. No, they just, never will. No, of course not. And uh, <laughs> just as they never stopped the real life drug trade. Exactly. Either. Um, you know, the tragedy. There's so much. There's a lot of tragedy in this. And one of the, the terrible parts of this is that Ross, you know, whether he's guilty or not, if he is if he is, you know, if he did run the Silk Road, I think he's a hero personally for bringing harm reduction to the drug marketplace. Too. And there have been people who have uh, avoided getting robbed, beaten and killed as a result of doing business on the Silk Road instead of doing business in some sort of shifty back alley situation. So the, the amount of good that has come from the Silk Road, I think, is incredible. And, you know, kudos to whoever Dread what? Pirate Roberts is. And if he's not Dread Pirate Roberts, then he's been accused of doing something he hasn't done. And that's that's a horrible wrong. And he needs to be uh, set free in either case, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, go ahead. I've, I've always said that, you know, a, a black market, you know, online drug exchange like that, that immediately nullifies the slippery slope argument that so many in the drug war like to use that, oh, it's, you know, it's um, marijuana is a starting point for cocaine and methamphetamine. No, it's not. If you don't go to that dealer, necessarily and he has all that stuff right there and you're suddenly you know wow i've got a smorgasbord now i can try this and try that if you're going online you're finding specifically what you're looking for you don't have to deal with a, an individual who sometimes does use violence in his trade yeah talk about harm reduction and Well, his trial date is set for November 3rd. Okay. However, there's been a lot of obstruction um, for him to be able to access discovery and take part in his own defense. Oh, wow. Um, at the time of his indictment, and by the way, at his indictment in New York, he was not indicted for any violence or murder for hire. That is not part of the indictment, although they used it to deny him bail. Um, Did that come back around? Because I'd heard, first I'd heard that he hadn't been indicted for the alleged murder for hire. Mm -hmm. And then that Maryland indicted yeah, that, him? I was going to say that, well, they took the, the indictments in New York, which was five out of the six, and relegated them to an uncharged crime category, which conveniently requires no proof, what? under the narcotics trafficking. Wow. And there is one uh, remaining hold, in Maryland. Hold that thought. I want to continue the discussion here in moments. We'll be back with more. Yes. Sure does. Now, Ross Ulbricht is uh, the person who we're discussing with his mother, Lynn. Lynn, thanks for coming on with us here for a second segment to dig further into this. Uh, your son is facing multiple criminal charges at the federal level. Now, apparently, Maryland is bringing charges as well. 
This is for uh, him allegedly operating the Silk Road. He's been in jail, in prison, waiting these charges since October of last mm-hmm. year. Maybe a trial date set in November, it sounds like. But you were telling us about some of the other uh, de- delaying going on, and you were just barely scratching the surface of the Maryland uh, murder-for-hire situation. Yeah, um, that was brought up in October and it's just sat in Maryland with and New York's taken over the well I don't think taken over the entire case but it's happening in New York the federal court in New York it, federal yeah. both and Maryland th- that indictment nothing's do- happening with that indictment right now it's just sitting there the other 5 have he is he was not indicted for they've the other 5 indi- uh, uh charges of murder for hire violence so, they're gone they're so, uncharged and there's one languishing you know, for so whatever just, purpose, they're not moving so, on. So just right to clear, now. so he's some of these murder for hire charges he hasn't been indicted on. One of them he has been. Is that right? Well, it's an indictment. He didn't get arraigned in court. They no arraignment. Issued, you know. What happens? See, I don't know, I don't know a lot about. Like I've been through a lot of criminal cases here in New Hampshire, but not at the federal level. So I'm not really mm-hmm. intimately familiar with with how that works. You know, you've been indicted but not arraigned. So it's just kind of floating out there? Kind of, yeah. And um, I, personally, I'm very certain it's also false, and I think it will go the way of the others, but that's my personal opinion. I, you know, I don't know Ross, but when I saw the uh, the charges, I thought this doesn't make sense for even whether Ross is Dread Pirate Roberts or not, having known something about Dread Pirate Roberts, having read articles about it, because we've been following the Silk Road since long before uh, Ross's case came up. So we've been, you know, we read one of the interviews that was done with Forbes magazine and uh, Dread Pirate Roberts. And, I mean, Dr- Dread Pirate Roberts seemed to be a very principled, liberty-minded person. So does Ross Ulbricht, apparently. He was also a really liberty-minded person. So how somebody like that would ever have, uh, you know, even considered putting out a murder for hire uh, contract. And then when you read the indictment, which I did when it came out originally, they were basically saying that he had paid the alleged killer, this hitman, with Federal Reserve notes through a bank transfer. Right. That like, never made what? sense. Why would somebody as brilliant as Dread Pirate Roberts pay somebody through an ACH bank transfer when he's, you know, very familiar with Bitcoin? <laughs> what kind of, I mean, he, you, you're not a, you, this guy's obviously not a fool. I mean, he's put together one of the most successful websites in the history of the, the Internet, one of the most revolutionary sites, and to think that he would be so bloodthirsty as to want to take somebody out who really was, you know, just some Internet person, somebody who had allegedly worked with the site in the past, and uh, he was allegedly mad at it. It just all seemed so, so false and so clearly designed to try to make this guy look like someone he wasn't. You see that in a lot of high-profile cases, especially the federal cases, mm-hmm. where suddenly there's just this twist. I mean, you're reading something, and, and it's, it's believable. And then all of a sudden there's this twist, and it's like, no way. I mean, there's no way that someone would make a mistake like that. The guy has an entire operation, whoever that guy might be, has an entire operation based upon anonymity, and then if he's going to commit an act so brutal, wouldn't that really be the one that you'd want to hide the most? You would think, and not only that, but he's a principled libertarian, so why would he even Even do that in the first place? Exactly. In the first place. So I, I agree with you. I hope this thing falls away. But the, the purpose really seemed to be to muddy his name mm-hmm. as much as possible right out the gate, because otherwise he hadn't harmed anybody. Nobody had alleged that he had actually victimized anyone, and so it would be easier to get people on his side if they didn't think, oh, well, he's a murderer. Yeah, it did a good job. And it suppressed fundraising, and mm-hmm. it, it just shocked me how many people are ready to believe what the government says, not even use the word alleged in half the media coverage. Oh, yep. And, um, well, suddenly he's a mass murderer. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. How's he doing? I mean, obviously you're, commu- you're communicating with him. I, I, I just him. talked to him. I just talked to him right before I came here. Oh, okay. And, you know, you were saying how not feeling alone, and I was mm-hmm. saying, Ross, you're not alone. I'm here, and all these people wishing you so well. And, there's so, and he, it was just so encouraging for him, mm-hmm. so heartening for him. And really uplifted him. And so I'm so grateful for that, for everyone here. Is he able to do any media? I sent him a letter uh, last year when he was in the first holding facility in San Francisco. And, you know, kind of introduced myself, said, hey, if you ever want to reach out, get the word out. Here's the number to the studio, nice the hotline. <laughs> he never wrote back. I figured it was because he didn't have any stamps or, uh, or envelopes. I, mean, I know how it can be. And I was like the very first week that he was in. 
Um, so I, you know, if that offer still stands, if he ever wants to call and, and, you know, get on the radio and talk about how he's feeling, what's happening in jail, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we've actually got a guy, Rich Paul, who's a friend of the show. He's in jail right now for selling, uh, cannabis in Keene, New Hampshire. Another person who never hurt anybody else. He admits to selling the, the cannabis and, uh, he violated probation while he was out after having been spent most of a year. So now he's calling the show regularly and just kind of checking in and giving us updates from, uh, from the inside. So that certainly, uh, is still an option. What other, uh, news can you bring to the table? Maybe, you know, something that, uh, is a recent development in the case. You said there was some, some blocking going on by mm-hmm. the, prosecution what's happening there yeah well um when when ross was indicted the judge was very concerned that he have access to discovery and and to be able to participate in his own defense mm-hmm. um as of today well what happened was they did submit cds 4.5 terabytes <laughs> they flooded him with Good Lord. that's one of the things they do apparently um so he's got to wade through that <laughs> and then they did not give him the software, a laptop with software that could read the CD. So they did, uh-huh. su- they did submit the discovery. Right. But he didn't have the laptop to read the CD. Yeah, it can be hard to get a laptop in a prison cell. So, well, they have yeah. to supply that and set it up, sure. right? And, um, because they denied him bail. And, um, so he was sitting there and I just heard from him today and he said, well, I can finally, I finally today, this is five months later, trials no- November 3rd. Mm-hmm got to get on a laptop, but I don't have enough time. They're not allowing me enough time on it. Unbelievable. So that's the next block. It's, yeah. It's and, it's a, it's a, a violation of his due process rights, plain and simple. Absolutely. I mean, clear as, clear as day. It's not the first time things like that have happened. Uh, I mean, it's all the way right down to the low level people picked up and put in a jail cell in county jail. I mean, the, the law library is slim at best. Uh, it can be hard to get access to it. They won't let you print things. I mean, there's just all kinds of mm-hmm. nonsense, little nonsense that they put in this petty stuff that they'll put in people's way to try. You, you don't have a chance at defending yourself, especially if you don't have an attorney. And a lot of people in jail don't have attorneys. They're just they're just waiting to take a plea deal or go at it them, themselves. And they make it as difficult as possible. And they mm-hmm. drag their feet and they make you take them to court and make you force them to give you access to the legal resources you're supposed to have a right to have access to. Yep, that's correct. What brought you to Porkfest? How did you end up here? Um, actually, I um, Brave New Books in Austin, Texas, Harlan Dietrich, said mm-hmm. um, he was going to have a table here to help um, raise money for Ross. And I said, oh, well, wow. maybe I should go and help. And he said, well, you should speak. Yeah. And I said, well, maybe. And then Porkfest was gracious enough to say, yeah, come speak. And I am. That's and, fantastic. Um, when are you speaking? I'm was speaking it? Saturday morning at 10. Okay. And I'm going to show that the counts of the indictment do not match the allegations they're bringing forward, which is absolutely unconstitutional. And um, that this case is much bigger than Ross. It's much bigger than Silk Road. If they can misapply laws against one citizen, they can do it to any of us. But it's also, I believe going to impact, it's going to create precedent, and precedent that's going to impact the Internet, Bitcoin, um, all kinds of things mm-hmm. are going to be challenged by the defense against the prosecution in this case. So it, it's not just a personal thing for me or Ross. It, it's going to be a historic precedent-setting case for us all going into the 21st century with um, the Internet and um, digital currency and government expansion. FreeRoss.org. People can go there and contribute. Can I give you cash today? Would that be okay? Yeah, and right, we'll put it on our thermometer. We're keeping track. All right, you great. Can check I'm going to our... do that here. Thank um, you. And, yeah, thank you for <laughs> yes, everything. Yes, we take cash. <laughs> thank, thank you for everything that you're doing <laughs> wow, uh, and you. standing by your son in this situation. I hope you'll keep us in the loop Absolutely. here. Absolutely. No, I, I would love for him to be able to talk to you.